There is no guaranteed spot to a path in the prep baseball All-American game, but the exposure of the West Coast Pro Case doesn't hurt. Nearly a dozen players from last year's event were selected to participate in the inaugural prep baseball All-American game in Milwaukee, and this time around, there was plenty of 2025 and 2026 draft prospects at Pepperdine from California, Arizona, Nevada, and Utah looking to follow suit. This is Coffee and Curveballs, Corey McCartney, along with Shooter Hunt. And Shooter, I mentioned the All-American game implications, but the West Coast Pro Case has long been a platform, pun intended, uh, for these guys to make their case for the summer ahead. It, you know, it really has. It stands on its own. It's the way I kick off my summer yearly because of just how good the prospects are, whether it's Paul Skeens making a name for himself even before he went off the Air Force and then obviously on to LSU now with the Pirates there. Uh, Mikey Romero was a first rounder. Uh, the amount of guys who have come through started off their summer, got on scouts' radars there, and then continued to have that success leading towards the draft and then now onto the big leagues has, has been outstanding, which is why it's a place I have to be. <laughs> so let's start off with five players with draft buzz, beginning with third baseman Boston Kellner, uh, Louisville commit, and the number one player in Arizona. I, I think the big thing about Kellner, he's a guy who moved down from Colorado this year, tried to get some better competition at Hamilton High School, hit about 900 uh, at Hamilton <laughs> on the barrel at all times. What I love about Kellner is he's a guy I, that I would recruit as a college coach. He's just an absolute gamer, blue-collar kid who was a big-time hockey player in the past, hopped on the mound at the event, pumped the, pumped the zone, uh, probably profiles best as a third baseman, potentially offensive second baseman, always on the barrel. The barrel stays in the zone for a long time. He's able to flick the ball with ease. Um, it, it, it really is a guy who's playing hard at all times, looks like he's going downhill. I think scouts are going to love his competitive edge and his quiet confidence. A pair of Big Ten commits, and I'm not going to get used to saying that anytime <laughs> soon, out of California and shortstop Tyler Dunning and uh, Oregon-bound Angel Laya. What made them stand out? Well, well, Dunning's a guy that going in the summer was a huge helium name that was part of my 25 helium guys that I think could really blow up. You're looking for those SoCal shortstops. He shows out. He can really slow the game down defensively, finds the glove across the diamond with ease with every single throw. Everything's crisp, polished, what you expect out of a Jay Sarah shortstop. Brett K does a, such a great job there um, with that program. But then he hopped to the plate. Um, there's going to be power there, the hit tool. He can spray it around throughout BP. But what really stood out to me about him were his in-game at-bats. Just really battled against some tough arms, worked deep into counts, and something that in a showcase setting, you, you, you can easily forget how those kids at bats went, oh, well, he had a hit here. You didn't forget about what Dunning did because he just had absolute great at bats and tracked well. Uh, you talk about Laya, who was a guy last summer that I really liked, the way that uh, the, the swing works from the left side, doesn't get cheated. He was on the barrel, had a couple hits in this day, ran 6'7. Um, the, the profile works, it, it's 6'3 ish. Um, I, I think. Pro guys are going to really love the way that the bat, if he continues to show out throughout the summer, he's obviously going to rise up boards. Nevada represented here by a pair of shortstop All-American game alum, uh, Ethan Klaus, and a Texas A&M commit, and Tate Southesteen, brother of All-American Ty, a, a year ago, and uh, Tate's a USC commit. And, and so Ethan Klaus, a Texas A&M recruit who we've loved in the past, the scouting community, especially those underclass guys, have been buzzing about him, um, had a solid workout throughout What's better about him is his tools play up in-game. The way he's able to track, he can spray the ball around the field. His frame's going to continue to add that strength. That power will continue to develop. But it's, it's something that those, those decision-making ability at the plate right now and the, and the pitch tracking ability is something that he's advanced at. So beyond just the BP Warriors and the pregame in and out, watching him in-game and seeing him over and over again is what makes you like Ethan Kloss even more. And then you say Southazine, who... I think because Ty was so good and was the oldest brother for so long, Tate kind of got lost. Not, not so much lost, but was in his shadow. He's not there anymore. He's ready to make this his summer. Tate's out of the scene was outstanding. I think he was over 106 with exit velocities, did not get cheated on the barrel throughout the game, can go to the outfield, can go to shortstop. Um, there's some versatility defensively, but my man does not get cheated <laughs> because he's taking daddy hacks at all times. We went through the 2026 rankings in another episode, so be sure to go check that out. There were some names from that class that had your eye. It starts with Rookie Shepard, Miami commit out of Nevada, who's number four in the class. I, I thought Rookie Shepard, he's a guy who's been famous since probably before he got to high school. I was blown away. Despite that fame, despite knowing him, he came and absolutely showed out. That was the best prospect on the field. He, he was the young, or one of the younger kids there. He steps in. At that, I'd always thought he was more 5'9", 5'10". No, he was six foot. Official, mm -hmm. official measurement there. Um, he had been a catcher, outfielder, shortstop. He looked the part at short. 
the hands were clean, confident. He found the right spot, slowed things down defensively, especially throughout the workout. Um, without a doubt, would start sending him out um, at that shortstop position. Can also go to the outfield, plays hard, stole a couple bags. He's scoring from first on, on hits. Um, at the plate, again, against some premium arms. I think he faced two really tough left-handers in that game, and he was not shying away. He's really going to have a chance to hit. The power is obviously going to be there. Um, it looks like a football frame. So, again, cannot say enough good things about how good uh, rookie Shepard was. Three players out of California among these 2026s, all of whom are top 10 in the state. Stanford bound outfielder James Tronstein, uncommitted second baseman CJ Weinstein, and outfielder Blake Bowen. Well, we, we talked about how good Tronny was when we were discussing that those 26 rankings in the past. He was outstanding at the event on the barrel for about a 5'11, just a hair under six foot frame. It's unassuming electricity. There is thunder in that barrel. Ball was jumping off at an eye opening clip. I'd probably put he and rookie were 1A, 1B. Those guys right next to each other were just. Who, who are these guys? You better find out who that is. He will shift in the shortstop at Harvard Westlake now that Bryce Rayner will likely go in the first round. Can easily play center field. He's a 6 6 runner. Um, I, I think he's only scratching the surface right now as one of the younger players in the class. Then you go to CJ Weinstein, who, I, I mean, Hunting the Beach just actually rolls out dudes nonstop. Those bats, Benji does a great job there. Um, but CJ Weinstein might have my favorite swing in the class. I might have to say that right now. <laughs> it's like an old school, no batting gloves, two hands, short to the ball, long through the zone. Um, what I was impressed about in this viewing was the power potential and, and what he showed off in BP, his, his ability to loft. I know he hit a massive bomb against Corona in the playoffs uh, late in the season that some reports had it going over 450 pe feet. Um, but C.J. Weinstein can really hit it. And then he goes out the field, not a shortstop. Um, but at second base, he made some great plays in gameplay where it, it really will ease any um, doubts anybody may have about the defensive tool because the stick's going to play. You can really go to second base. I'm expecting the world from Weinstein. Now, Shooter, it's been a while since I took geography, but last I checked, Tennessee was, wasn't a Western state, but Tennessee's Colt Springall, a Vols commit and a top 10 player in Tennessee in 2026, shows up and shows out. Yes. Uh, Native Nevada, Nevadian, Nevadian, um, it's from Nevada, potentially going back there, moved to Tennessee, got some work in this year at Lipscomb Academy. Um, what I love about Springall is he's not scared. And it, it's kind of become the calling card of those Tony Vitello recruits there to the Vols. They are not scared. They're going to walk on with confidence uh, and really play. What does he do? He faces an absolute dude on the bump. And what does he do at the first pitch? He hits an absolute nuke to the wall. Um, not the biggest guy, still adding strength right now, but he digs in the box and he expects to be the best. He expects success, look great at shortstop. He's going to have a nice summer, um, and he's only going to get better as that frame gets stronger too. You being a former pitcher, I'd be remiss if I didn't give you a chance to run through your favorite arms. Uh, you had yours in California duo with UCLA-bound righty Angel Cervantes, a lefty and Cody Kimley, who's in Arizona State, along with Arizona recruit Andrew Jacobs, a righty from Arizona. And there were some outstanding arms at the event. Angel Cervantes really started us off, right? The same way he closed things out for the 25s in Milwaukee at the All-American game, he has only gotten better. And what I loved about Angel is 92-94, showing that real three-pitch mix, breaking balls up close to 2,900 RPM, feel for the changeup, uh, does whatever he wants with it. Really a bullying presence. He gets behind, between those lines, and he flips a switch. And whereas last year, he was a great kid, goes out there, competes. Now he kind of knows he's the best, and he goes out there to prove it every time. He's looking to step on next. Um, I loved what he was about. He really set the tone to his big summer. Um, Kimley w was a revelation for me. An absolute a dynamic mover down the mound. His uncoiling special, uh, low three-quarter slot. He's about 88 to 90, solid feel for spin. I think he has a chance to be that kind of helium buzzy guy in SoCal that, that continues to get better throughout the next 12 months or so. Um, so really thought that he was a, a big winner with a quick arm. And then Andrew Jacobs, who was just coming back, I think from an injury. So this is one of the first times he was on the bump. Up to 91, another fluid mover, low slot, feel for spin, three pitches, looks the part of a starter. Um, and the fact that he's up to 91 in his first outing means likely by the end of the summer he's going to be tickling those mid-90s. From the West Coast Pro Case to Lake Point Sports for MPI, nobody has more sky miles than Shooter Hunt. Make sure you keep it locked here all summer long as we'll have plenty more coming to you from coffee and curveballs. Until next time, I'm Corey McCartney, and that's aforementioned Shooter Hunt, and we'll see you at the Diamond.